What's up guys, it's Jim with Awaken TCG, bringing you guys another Locals video. Today, we have the leader you all voted for, Bello Betty. Luckily, I already fully made this deck and have been playing it. Um, I even dripped out most of the cards. Um, I love this leader. This leader is very, very, very fun. Um, very high rolly, um, really sacky, but you know, that's kind of also what's fun about it. Um, you know you're going into the game and, you know, you're not 100%, you know, you're not taking it seriously. It's literally what your life is. That's that's just how this leader goes and that's how um, I play it. So I just like to have fun with her. Um, this leader is not winning you any regionals or anything like that anytime soon unless you are the luckiest person on planet Earth. But that's not what we're playing her for we're playing her to have fun and honestly randomly take a local win we did not get it this week unfortunately got to finals and lost in the finals to a sakazuki which you will see later in the gameplay in this video but enough of me yapping let's just get right into the list first up here to no one's surprise we have four of bello betty searcher um, this leader locks you to revolutionaries if you do not know what she does. You need to have revolutionaries to discard to actually get your leader's effect. So if you have no revolutionaries to begin with, that does not work. So obviously we need to run a bunch of them, which makes this one drop searcher a no brainer. Uh, also your best play going first, whether it be on one or two dawn, whether you're going first or second, basically on your first turn, this is always your best play. Um, next up, let's go over the staples. We have four of Emporio Ivankov. So Emporio Ivankov is just way too good. Um, being able to get out a 5k body for basically free with your leader effect, or just attaching two sometimes, is uh, just so powerful. There's no denying it. Uh, I usually end up playing this card going second on my four dawn turn. And I'll use leader effect and maybe buff like a Betty on board or a trigger I already got. Swing with that and then use this guy to hopefully bring out this next card, which is going to be your main target when you have Ivankov. And that's going to be Karasu. When this card got revealed, everybody was up in arms. We thought this card was going to be the most broken card on this earth. Um, minusing 1k power to a leader uh, for the turn seemed pretty broken, especially in a deck that can give plus 9k total for free. Uh, just one discard, no Dawn investment. Um... But you'd be surprised. Uh, don't get me wrong. This card is amazing, um, but there are a lot of ways to deal with it. But the turns you do get it off, and, you know, God forbid you get two of them off, are going to be very, very difficult for your opponent. If they are not dead, uh, if they are close, it will make sure they are. So uh, next up, uh, probably the second best card to bring out off of Ivankov is going to be Lindbergh. Uh, mostly just playing this guy for the fact that he's a trigger and a revolutionary. Uh, you do want to get triggers in this deck as getting triggers off life just allows you to have more bodies on board and go kind of crazy. Um, this guy, if you don't know, his win attacking effect is just KO a 3,000 power or less character. Uh, if he has 7,000 power or more. You know, that comes up sometimes, but honestly not that much. Most of the characters we're dealing with uh, in this current meta are like 4 cost and above. And none of those guys are 3,000 power or less. Uh, your best target probably is like a Rebecca in Sakazuki or like a brand new, if that's all they have on board at the moment. But just a great card that just works perfectly in this deck. And another revolutionary trigger, we have Morley here. He's a 3 cost 5k, which is, you know, that beautiful stat line with no counter, unfortunately. And he cannot be blocked when you swing really big. So this is a must to go for game in the late game. Uh, if you get this off trigger and they were relying on blockers to live, uh, this card just in completely invalidates. Um, but basically, I see people running this as a three of. I think that's wrong. Uh, if you end up going first, you will basically have nothing to play on your three dawn turn. If you don't have this guy in hand, you'll play like a Bello Betty swing seven, which is okay, but you'd rather play this guy on three. He's one of your only three dawn plays, and that's why I think he's just a staple three of. Also, just making it more likely to trigger out, obviously. And our next revolutionary trigger, we have a four of Bartholomew Kuma. So Kuma, you know, he's a two, two, very low stat line, but you get to play him for free. One of the very few triggers you get to play for free without trashing a card. So I think that's really good. Also, just has a good spot in the meta, I think, just 
since Rebecca is so common, this is a great way to get rid of it for free. Um, just a good card. Another revolutionary and trigger type card. This one's a little bit more of a tech card. And I would consider putting it down to three. But I don't think any lower than that would be good. Um, speaking of a three of, we have Inazuma. Uh, I am running three Inazuma. A lot of people run four, but I like it at three um, because I, I do see it as much as I need to, but I don't see it too much. Because when I see this guy in life, it kind of feels bad. Um, at three, you will not see that as much. But obviously, you're going to need a rusher in this deck. If you need an extra body to swing, this is your man. So uh, obviously, in a revolutionary as well, um, just a no-brainer in the deck. Uh, next up, another no-brainer, four of Koala. Revolutionary and 2k. What else could you ask for? Also minusing 3k, which is going to combo with things like Lindbergh. Um, you can KO like a 6k Luchi or something along the lines or like a 4k Vanilla or 4 cost Vanilla and Luffy. Stuff like that. Um, just a 2k. I mean, mostly using it as a 2k for the most part. Uh, next up, probably the most troll card I have in this deck, but I have two alt arts, so we're running it. It is the 6 cost Sabo that takes out two characters with a total power of 4,000 or less. This card honestly never comes up, I'm going to be honest. Um, I would either put it down to one or none uh, after my testing with this deck. I just think it's fun, um, you know, when you can get the combos off, Koala into this or Fire Fist into this. Speaking of, we have Fire Fist. Um, yeah, this guy is really good uh, taking out two Rebeccas or using this and taking out like a Kuzan or Rebecca in one play is really satisfying. And also one of the only revolutionary big bodies that is always a 7k. So one of the bodies that you don't need to buff up, say you have a board of like a one drop, uh, Inazuma and a Morley, you can buff them and then Sabo's already going to be a big swing. So just a good card and a good card in the late game if people are trying to starve you. Definitely a decent card. Um, and put it a little earlier, but yeah, we have one Fire Fist. I do like this card, but more than one feels really bad, honestly. Um, you know, it's good in certain situations. Like I said, if you have Sabo or like a good play with Lindbergh or against Sakazuki, you can say minus four to their Borsalino blocker and then KO their Rebecca on the side. So they need to give you that Borsalino this turn. Uh, no questions asked. Um, just a really good kind of a tech card. Um, and also, if you don't need it, a perfect revolutionary uh, card to trash with your leader. And now getting into the yellow cards, let's get into the four of staples. We have four of Blocker Sanji, just uh, one of the most obvious cards to run in this deck. Uh, he's been one of the best trigger characters since he's been released. Getting a four or five blocker with counter off trigger is just way too good. He's going to save you a lot of times. He's one of the only cards that can save you for lethal swings, out of life at least. Um, and he's just really necessary. Also, you know, just a good 5k uh, along with our others that you can see out of your first life for bigger swings, which is always good. Next up, we have the 2K Satori, um, another trigger 5K. This one being a 2K, we are lacking 2Ks as Koala and Satori are only 2Ks. This one going to give you a 5K body as well. Um, just a no-brainer. But um, next up here, uh, we're going to get into my most troll part of the list. We have 2 Cracker. We have two Smoothie, and we have two Charlotte Moscato. Um, so for those of you that don't know what this Charlotte Moscato does, he gets a Banish when you have one attached, while also being a trigger off life character like any of our other trigger characters. Uh, this guy is actually really terrifying. Um, if you get him on board off trigger at the right time and your opponent does not have a blocker, um, this card is basically going to get you a free life. Um, honestly, better than double attack in a lot of situations. Uh, really strong. Obviously, it's only a 3-4, which is pretty weak. But with leader effect, it's going right to 7. Um, honestly, I didn't get to see it recently. But I'm, I've just kind of been testing these three to see what ratios I want. I'll probably switch out some for Sabo, and, and we'll see there. But um, Cracker, I think I'd add more of. This card is insane. If you go second and let your opponent attack you first and see this off your first life, it's basically game. Um, even later in the game, if you are lower than your opponent, this card just wins. And also just another 4-5, even if it's not online. Smoothie doing the same thing. Uh, really good for if they try to starve you, as this is one of the only cards that can take your life forcibly 
and basically get those cards you need in hand. Unfortunately, if it was a trigger, it's going to cancel that out, but that is the price we pay when they weren't swinging at us anyway. Um, and last but not least, I think the people that don't run this card in Bello Betty are definitely trolling. And that card is going to be 200 million volts Amaru. Um, for those of you that don't know what this card does, if you haven't seen it in NL yet, um, is going to give plus 3k for two, which is already a net positive Dawn investment. And then if you are at one life or less, it's going to rest a four or less, which is probably the most common cost uh, for a blocker and for many other cards in the current meta, whether it be in Sakazuki or Purple Luffy, whatever else. Um, this card is going to allow you to go for game uh, more times than not. So basically that's why it's in here. For games where they, you know, they block it up with a Borsalino and a Rebecca, uh, you got one of these guys in hand, it, it's basically saying uh, you win this turn. Um, just 100% necessity to go for game in some situations and deal with blockers, as a lot of these cards cannot really deal with blockers. Uh, even Lindbergh, stuff like that, can not get past a Borsalino. Um, but anyways, guys, that's going to be the deck list. Uh, we did get to the finals. Um, definitely had some interesting matchups before the finals, I'm not going to lie. But uh, it was definitely fun, and I hope you guys can try out this deck as well. But anyway, let's get right into the game plan. Hopping right into game one here. We have the two revolutionary leaders. We are going against Sabo, which I honestly think is a really good matchup for Bello Betty. Any four life leader is already looking good for Bello Betty. Besides decks like, um, you know, NL or Sakazuki because they are just a little too strong. But this one in particular, Sabo, does struggle with hand size and definitely struggles with defense a bit. So this is definitely a favorable matchup for Bello Betty. So let's see how it goes. Sabo is going to be going first. I think I won dice roll. He'll play Nami, pick up a Rush Zoro, and pass to me. On two dawn, we have Bello Betty Searcher. We're going to look at top five. Gonna check out the hand, and we'll grab an Ivankov. I think we already have the Karasu to play out in hand, and then we will play another one. So the best start possible in a already winning matchup. I think you guys are going to know where this game goes. Uh, spoilers, this is a very quick match. <laughs> so we'll pass back to him on 3 Don. He's going to play a Nami that plays a Rested Don, and we'll swing 5. We'll get a Cracker, which is the best for sure you could get. We'll take another swing from Sabo and have no trigger there. But with this board, we are probably already sealing the deal here. We're going to play that Ivankov that we searched out. We'll buff it, the Bellow that we didn't swing with, and the Cracker. And we will use Effect to get Karasu off of Ivankov. We'll go 6 to 5. We'll go 5 to 5. And then we will go 8 to 5, and he will take that one. To four, actually, I forgot. Karasu did minus one to his leader. He will search with another Nami Searcher, searching top five for a Straw Hat Pirate. He'll grab a Rad Beam. That is definitely much needed in this matchup, no doubt about that. He will use his other one drop Nami's effect to attach to leader. So if he does play a 5k like that, it is protected from any swings. But we were not planning on swinging a board anyway, to be honest with you. He'll swing at my two small Bella Bettys, not wanting to give me any free counter. Probably smart there, because if he swung a cracker, I could just give him an easy 2k. So, now with a devastating board right now, we actually are at less life than him still, so cracker's double attack will be online if we attach one Dawn. Going for game this turn is actually possible, and there we go, we're going to use leader effect, trashing koala, and buffing everything by 3 for free. Now on 6 Dawn this turn, we'll attach 1 to cracker and swing 10, he is forced to take, and... <laughs> Gonna think about using trigger air, and that is going to be two. In a really rough spot here, we're gonna use another Karasu off Ivankov. Probably should have done that first. So, and then swinging with the next one. His leader is now at 3k. Um, it will give us the Rad Beam and two 1ks, uh, showing me that he does not have any 2ks in hand, which probably means uh, this is a wrap. With one life left, we'll go eight to three. With three cards in hand, there is no countering out of that. We'll take that, and we will put the remaining 
Oh, we'll use Amaru and then do the rest and swing 11, I think that is. And yeah, you have 11 to 3, not even close. That was the fastest match ever. Getting into game two here, we are going to be going It's a blue and purple Kaido. Another fantastic matchup for us. Uh, any deck that is for life already and doesn't have a lot of defense is pretty much cooked against Bello Betty. That is the consensus. It is very, very hard to win these matchups. So fortunately for us, we got two really good ones in a row. But um, these games today, guys, I'm not going to lie, they are fast. Uh, I drew well, and we went crazy. Um, the last game is a bit more interesting, but yeah, this one's going to go quick. So Kaido again on one. Uh, we will be on two here. And thank you, about if we want to play anything. We have the Koala, which is going to be our only play here, but do not need to go that aggro against this deck. We can kind of just wait. So we end up don't we end up not playing the koala. So he will tap one for who's who and search top five for an animal king to pirates. He will find that Oigashima that this deck always needs. Um, making it really slow though, because if he is playing that next turn, he's not playing any blockers. And if he does swing here like he does, and we get a trigger, unfortunately for him, we don't. But that is going to put him at a very disadvantageous spot. We'll play the Ivankov. Use leader effect to buff it up to 8, so we can use Ivankov's effect for Karasu, and we'll swing 5 at his 4k leader, getting the best possible start. Minus last turn, you would definitely prefer getting at least one searcher. Now passing back to him, he draws into another Onigashima, unfortunately, and he will end up playing that one. And not a lot of plays here unless he has a 2 cost blocker or another 1 cost searcher. Honestly, a really rough matchup, because this matchup, you're basically trying to get to 10 as fast as possible. But this deck doesn't really care about it. He's going to just go 7, and we'll take that. No trigger again. But fortunately, I think this matchup is so good for Betty that you really don't need triggers, as you will see this turn. So thinking about what to play here, we're going to tap 3 for the Inazuma Rush. And we will use Leader Effect to buff all 3. Um, Inazuma now online that Karasu and Ivankov are both at 8, which if you don't know Inazuma needs a 7 carry more body and we'll get another Karasu off Ivankov. Oh my, swinging 8 into 3, he'll have to take that. Now thinking how to allocate Dawn here, we'll swing 7 into 3. He needs to give, what is this, yep, up to 7, up to 8, yep, 5 to 7 to 8. He gives two twos and a one. Now with two AK swings remaining, I know I can't end him this turn. I'm just going to go five to three. He'll take that. Thinking about using the trigger, but he decides not to. And we will end up going nine to three. As we know, he's almost 100% not going to be able to counter out of this one. And getting another trigger here. This is going to be the Red Rock, and he's going to bottom deck that Ivankov. If I were him, I probably would have got rid of Karasu, but yeah. We're just going to play that Kuma, getting rid of any counter swing he can have besides leader. Uh, kind of just telling him that, yeah, next turn you are dead for sure. If you want to play a big body, you lose. You need to play a blocker. That's really the only way to get out of this. And even then, there is probably just no chance. It, this game is pretty much lost. But now allocating his Dawn here, he's actually going to go ahead and play that King. Um, he definitely should have attached to Leader first. That was kind of a big misplay. And he's going to go ahead and KO Karasu here. Um, because if you do attach to Leader, he is going to get you one extra active. After you get that KO, he'll activate uh, Owning Ishima effect. Now with two Dawn remaining again, his best play is probably swing seven into Inazuma. He's actually going to go ahead and swing 7 into leader. Um, interesting play there, but we are going to head and pass back to us. Um, no blockers, no life, only f 6 cards in hand. We're just going to go ahead and use leader effect real quick. Swing 8 to 4 with Karasu. Needs to give us 5k worth of counter here to get out of that. i um, going to trash the Onigashima, going up 3 plus 1, yeah, and that is all he has, and that is going to be a good game. Go next, as I said, this this is just a really, really tough matchup for any deck, like Kaido's rough, um, I think Law could be rough, Law does have more blockers, so it might make it a bit easier, but any 4 life deck is just going to have a really hard time against a Bella Betty, especially one with a great curve. 
And now getting into our finals match here, going against Sakazuki. Who else to see in the finals but the best deck in format on probably one of the best players that attends our locals. He definitely takes them pretty frequently and going to be playing the best leader of this set, so he'll be taking a lot more, no doubt about that. But we actually won dice roll, so I think we're going to end up going second here. And I already know in this matchup that he has experience against Bello Betty, so this matchup is going to be pretty tough. The way Sakazuki needs to play against Bello Betty here is just kind of not swing at leader and not allow for triggers. And basically just starve the hand and starve the board until there is not much left, and even if you get triggers, they can kind of just remove it anyway. But yeah, we actually played the Koala there on turn two. No searchers, and that we just kind of need to establish a body because we know we're going to go the Ivankov Karasu next turn. So yeah, he's actually on his three down turn, just going to completely pass and not swing because he had no plays. So we're going to go ahead and play Ivankov, um, buffing with leader effect by three to the Koala and the Ivankov, trashing the Sabo. And we will bring out the Karasu with the Ivankov effect, bringing leader to four. We'll swing five. Uh, luckily, that was not a trigger, and we'll swing six. Um, it might be more optimal to swing six and then five there, but if they don't have a 2k, it's probably better to go this way. Playing Bello Betty, you kind of just need to accept that your deck needs to rely a little bit on luck, but hey, that's most yellow decks in general. So that is just how it's going to be, but now on him on five Dawn. If he has a Luchi plus something like a Great Eruption this turn, it would be a really efficient way to remove my board, but he's gonna go ahead and swing five into Koala. Now, not really a way you can get rid of both bodies right now in the same turn. Unless he had something like double, no, honestly, no. There's no way to remove both of these unless you have something weird like a Kobe, I think. But, yeah, now going to search with the brand new, going to pick up that Hina, trashing a Rebecca and a Kuzan, and he'll use the Ice Age on Ivankov, bringing it to zero, and just the bottom deck it with the Hound Blaze, and not really using the 3k there. But yeah, um, Hound Blaze there is a pretty inefficient removal, especially after an Ice Age. You'd rather use a Great Eruption to draw one and do the same exact effect, but yeah, probably just showing us that he does not have that much efficient removal in hand at the moment. And because of that, I'm actually just gonna kind of play around it here and hope he doesn't have a Luchi. So we're gonna swing seven. Um, not swinging with Karasu and just play the Smoothie. So kind of just saying, okay, if you don't have it like a Luchi this turn and you leave this uh, you leave both of these cards on board, you are in for a world of hurt next turn. Looking back, obviously, I think it's a little better to just swing with Karasu here uh, last turn and then swing with leader, not develop, get him down to like one or zero life. So he's going to go ahead and use the Great Eruption, minusing two to our Karasu, trashing a seven cost Kuzan with leader effect. Now with six Dawn remaining, uh, he'll do the Suru to bring down Smoothie to two as well he'll swing five to lead we'll take that getting a satori trigger thankfully and he'll do that luchi completely removing the board we had thankfully had to swing to get that down minus forcing out another character so in this situation if i did swing last turn he would have been at one or two life which would have made this turn a lot worse for him because he wouldn't have developed a blocker so basically I think the right play is just to go kind of all on face because you put them in a position where they need to choose between developing a blocker or they need to choose between removing your board because a lot of times there's just not enough dawn to do both. So I think it was probably better to just go aggro. We're going to use leader effect um, buffing by trashing the koala. We'll go 10 to lead. Thinking about it here, probably doesn't have a ton of 2Ks. He did just play one out. He'll take that. We'll put the rest on leader, and we'll go 11 to lead. And he will take that one as well. Now down to zero. So if he does not have blockers, which is honestly pretty rare for this deck, it's probably going to be over as I can just attach all to leader and win. But he's going to just go ahead and swing five at Satori. I know it's gone anyway, so there's no reason to not counter out there. We want him to swing at leader. We really do. And even if he does swing at leader right now, he can probably remove whatever I get. So it makes it a little bit awkward here. And I think he knows that as well. So he's actually going to just go ahead and use leader effect, trashing the three cost Hina there. 
no real use for it right now. Playing the Championship of Borsalino Blocker. Um, absolutely beautiful card. Not expensive at all. No, no, of course. Um, probably one of the most expensive cards in the game and really, really worth it, honestly. It looks absolutely amazing. Followed by the Sabo. Developing two blockers, which is what I was afraid of. We do not want to develop anything right now. We'll just make him uh, give us a blocker there. Swing max 15 and passing to him. He'll swing five. We'll take. He'll swing a six. Knowing that he's going to remove whatever I get, I'm actually just going to give him a 2k here. Because even if that was a trigger, it's 100% getting removed. He had 10 Dawn to follow up that swing. So yeah, I'm going to use the raw Great Eruption with no targets, followed by another one. Just trying to unbreak his hand here. And he will find the Rebecca and take the Sabo back and replay it. Meaning that Kuma in my hand cannot get rid of the Rebecca as the Sabo now completely put Rebecca under its protection. Really rough for us here. Um, not a lot we can do. We're just going to swing a lot. He's going to have to uh, block that with Rebecca and we'll play the Sanji. Knowing that with not a lot of cards in hand, if he wanted to, he could really just go for game this next turn. Sanji being our really only defensive card, that is going to make us stand a chance here. And this is the way to beat Bello. He really, you know, he, he played it well. He went to zero, which is a bit scary, but he knew his outs and he knew what he could possibly lose to. Which is going, just going to make this matchup a whole lot easier. I'm going to swing six, only with two cards in hand, and we're going to get that Morley trigger. Um, even with infinite blockers, this Morley trigger is going to ensure we have game if he can't remove it. But it is Sakazuki. He, you know, Sakazuki can remove whatever they need to. Going to grab the Rebecca and probably end up replaying that. Yeah. So just replaying the Rebecca, grabbing the Hina. Not sure there's really a way we are winning this game at this point. <laughs> Got a minus to the Sanji and do... Inugami Gurren on the brand new. And then attach one more, go seven. With two cards in hand, a five and a seven is going to seal the deal. And that is going to be the game. Really, really tough game if you know how to play against Betty. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. This has been our weekly locals video, once again, dropping every Saturday. If you have not checked the polls yet, it is kind of a race between Sabo and Rosinante, the two new leaders, going to be one of them winning out for next week's locals. Honestly, not sure which one's going to win. If you guys have not voted yet, go ahead and check our community page and you can see that poll and go vote for yourself. Um, I think if Sabo wins, I will be piloting it. And if Rosinante wins, I think Wraith will be piloting it. But talking about our games today, yeah, Bello Betty, guys, is a super fun deck. I was already planning on playing it, so I'm glad it won the poll. Um, this deck is just, like I said before, a lot of fun. It is very luck-based in the fact that you need triggers, you need your early searchers. Um, against decks like Sakazuki, you really need to hope they don't have the perfect removal. But at the end of the day, in those matchups that... <laughs> Really just don't have enough defense. This deck just face rolls like crazy. Um, yeah, definitely one of the most fun decks in the game. I, I don't usually enjoy aggro decks, but this one I, for some reason, just enjoy. It's just really funny. Buffing 9k total for free is just ridiculous. But unfortunately, not going to be one of the best leaders in the meta just because of lack of consistency. And never really having enough cards in hand is a real issue as well. But do not let that keep you from playing this deck, guys. This is a bit, this deck is a ton of fun. Um, if you're looking for a perfect list, I don't think my list is the best list ever. But um, you can use it as the base. A lot of people just go full character version, which I like. And just kind of get as many triggers as possible. But there's a ton of ways to run this deck and a ton of ways to have fun with it. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching our Weekly Locals video. Uh, please like and subscribe. We are on our way to 3K, and if you do not know, at 5,000 subscribers, we are giving away five OP05 boxes. Five boxes for every 1,000 subs, guys. So look forward to that giveaway. Please like and subscribe, and you guys have a great day. Peace.